everybody this is dylan and tessa with western wild and today we're going to give you a beginner's guide to snowshoeing quarter mile into the hike and it is already spectacular. Snowshoeing is an awesome way to stay active through the winter. It allows you to access beautiful scenic vistas like this uh, and it can also help you to stay fit coming into your summer hiking season. Renting snowshoes is a really great way to try them out before you buy them. They're usually pretty cheap and you can do one day or weekend rentals on them. One thing you need to be prepared for when you do rent snowshoes is they size them based off of your weight. So you do need to have an accurate representation of what you currently weigh so that you can get the right size snowshoe for you. The reason it's important to get an accurately sized snowshoe is that the right size allows you to float over the top of the snow instead of post hole through. If your snowshoes are too small, then you're basically going to be making big holes in the snow. If they're too large, then well, you'll have a lot of flotation, but you'll also be dragging a lot of extra weight on your legs, which is not very fun. Bigger snowshoes are great for backcountry, deep powder type of situations. Smaller snowshoes are great for hard packed snowshoe situations. One thing to be mindful of when you're out snowshoeing is the difference between a snowshoer trail and a cross country skier trail. Not all trails have nice signs like this that tell you which direction is for snowshoers and which direction is for cross country skiers. But when they do have those, definitely keep to the snowshoer side of the trail when you are snowshoeing. Snowshoes really can chew up a cross country skiers track. Um, as you can see over to my right, they have a much nicer groomed trail that fits with skis and off up to my left here you can see that the ground is a little bit more choppy that's because snowshoes have nice spikes on them that kind of grip into the ground and chop things up so just be considerate of other people's trails whatever your normal hiking mileage is for your first snowshoeing trip make sure it is significantly shorter than what you're used to hiking because you're basically hiking with big sandbags on your feet through soft sand or powder, uh, which is significantly more tiring than your average summer hike. So if you are a seven to 10 miler hiker in the summer, try a two to three mile snowshoeing venture on relatively flat, flat, flat land <laughs> instead of, <laughs> we just hiked up a hill, I'm a little out of breath. Um, We're proving our point yeah, proving yeah, through our the point. process of the video. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That also means keep your elevation to a minimum on your first trip. Uh, this hike has around 500 feet of elevation gain. Um, normally for your first one, I'd suggest keep it uh, to 100 to 200 feet of elevation change and you're going to be a lot happier. When you're out snowshoeing, layers is the name of the game. When you start a hike, you're usually pretty cold and about 10 minutes into the hike, you're stripping layers because you're sweating pretty profusely. When you stop for a trail beer or for your lunch, you're gonna get cold again, so you're gonna need to layer back up. So the way we like to approach it is having a base layer that is a kind of a wicking option. So it kind of takes the sweat away from your body. Having a warmer you know, fleece or long underwear style layer to put over that if you want to. Um, and then I have, this is more of a three in one, but a puffy layer and a waterproof layer. I also always carry either fleece lined leggings or an additional pair of pants because basic leggings, if you're a woman, this gets really, really cold when you're snowshoeing. Uh, snow, wind, you name it, just kind of cuts right through this. So you do need something insulated for your legs as well. It is also really important to have insulated waterproof shoes. When you're plowing through powder, your feet are getting completely submerged in snow, so you need something that will keep you nice and warm and dry. Purchasing gaiters to add to your set of gear for snowshoeing is a really great addition. It helps to keep snow out of your boots and it insulates your legs as well. And finally, don't forget a beanie, sunglasses, and I'm not wearing them right now, but gloves. It's 
it's always a good idea to have at least one other person with you when snowshoeing. Um, but whenever you're plowing through deep powder, the optimal number of people is really four because you can take turns with whoever's in the front uh, and the uh, last person has a nice smoothed out trail by the end and they can conserve energy. All right, so Dylan and I have walked over this now three times. He's up there. And as I walk over it, it is now much easier for me to plow through and whoever comes behind me will have a nice established trail. Coming out of the woods, here we are at our destination, Snow Shelter, Mountain Views. All right, so we made it to our destination at the Snow Shelter and it is absolutely gorgeous out here. Check out those mountains. Nice sunny, balmy day. This is why we snowshoe. One thing that's nice when snowshoeing is to pick a cool destination to end your trip at. Um, here we have kind of a double feature. Through the National Forest, you get a lot of these snow shelters, which are really cool. They have little stoves in them. It's a spot to warm up, socialize with your fellow uh, backcountry skiers and snowshoers. Uh, and then here- And you have the views. We Lots also have the views. So it doubles up, makes for a Nice little trip, and uh, especially on a bluebird day like this. All right, so we're headed back to the car now. Thanks for coming along on this trip. Hope you learned a few things. If you have questions about getting started with snowshoeing, we'd be happy to answer them in the comments and uh, we'll get a nice uh, blog write up on our website as well. Um, and uh, as always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, subscribe. And stay wild. Oh, you're supposed to keep walking. <laughs>